गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू माई नेम इज आशुतोष रस्तोगी आई एम ए टीचर बाई प्रोफेशन माई मिशन इज टू इम्पार्ट क्वालिटी एजुकेशन टू ऑल फॉर दैट पर्पज आई एम क्रिएटिंग दीज वीडियोज इफ यू अप्रिशिएट माई वर्क देन प्लीज डू लाइक माई वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल सो दैट आई कुड गेट द मोटिवेशन टू प्रिपेयर मोर वीडियोज एनी वेज टूडे वील गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन टू कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम दीज आर द आउटलाइंस ऑफ टू डेज लेक्चर विल स्टार्ट अप विद द इंट्रोडक्शन which we'll discuss about what is communication what do you mean by communication then we'll discuss about basic block diagram of communication systems then we'll discuss about a typical communication system which is a generalized form of communication system then we'll discuss uh, various elements of communication systems one by one in which we'll discuss about information source transmitter what are various sort of communication channels then what are receivers and then destination then at last we'll focus over some of the examples of communication system so communication is basically inter exchange of information so for that purpose we need a link to transmit our information so basically communication is a process of establishing connection or link between two points for information exchange and that two points could be several sorts of devices even two persons which could inter exchange the informations we cannot uh, transfer our information to the desired users directly in most of the cases why we are saying that in most of the cases just because it is not always possible for a person to go to a person personally and deliver that information suppose if do, two person wants to intercommunicate with each other but they are not at the same place one is one city and another one is residing in the another city so how will they will going to transmit their information directly without having any use of other means hence we need a system which can transmit as well as receive our information to and from the desired users so it could collect the information from the desired user and transport it to the other person and vice versa so then next question is what is communication system a system which actually facilitates the process of communication means inter exchange of information is actually termed as a communication system so some of the examples of communication systems are electronic communication systems such as we are using our dot phone systems or mobile phone communication systems then optical communication systems with the help of optical fiber communication we usually transmit larger amount of information from one point to another point through optical communication systems then acoustic communication systems underwater communication systems are being examples of those acoustic communication systems so this is the basic block diagram of communication system will be having a transmitter which will going to transmit your message signal then there is a receiver to which your transmitter wanted to transmit that information and to connect between transmitter and receiver will be having some physical medium or channel through which the information generated by the transmitter will be passed through and delivered at the receiver so this is the basic block diagram of your communication system so basic block diagram of communication system mainly consists of three parts number one is your transmitter then there is a receiver and channel to to interconnect between transmitter and the receiver so channel is nothing but a physical media through which your information or signal will going to travel so the basic job of the transmitter is to prepare the information for sending through the physical medium from which the propagation of the information has to take place so point is that physical media could be of many type such as it could be wired media or it could be wireless media and second important point is the information source is generating which type of information so that it could be passing through the medium suppose if we are using optical fiber cable then we need a information in light waves suppose if we are transmitting our information through electromagnetic radiation then we need the transmitter accordingly so the transmitter is something which will going to manipulate our information such that it could be easily transported or traveled through the available medium or through which we want to pass our signal so the transmitter basically matches the characteristics of signal to the characteristics of the medium through which the information has to be transmitted for efficient transmission we are saying the same thing if 
transmitter has to modify the signal generated by the information source so that it could easily pass through the available medium so then what is channel channel or physical medium through which the signal propagates it is mainly the main source of noise which degrades the signal quality there are there is lots of attenuation distortion interference that actually happens in the channel what are they we'll study in greater detail in upcoming lectures so at last the receiver actually performs the reverse operation that has been performed by the transmitter over the information so that the information generated by the information source could be extracted properly what do you mean by extraction means it could be well understood by the receiver or it could be the same information that has been transmitted by our transmitter or information source so now we'll discuss about a typical communication system initially we'll be having a information source whose responsibility is to generate information then that information message will pass through the transmitter whose responsibility is to reconvert or convert that message signal to such signal which could be easily transported through your channel so transmission medium or channel is the major source of noise so system noise or interference basically occurs at at the channel only so after this noisy signal will pass through the receiver whose responsibility is to remodify the available signal in terms of message and then that message will get delivered to the destination so if we consider this purple color rectangular box this is nothing but the same basic block structure of communication system that we have studied early so this is basically the typical communication system block diagram of typical communication system so there are basically five elements that must have a basic communication system number 1 is your information source whose responsibility is to generate some sort of information then transmitter whose responsibility is to modify the information signal generated by the information source such that it could easily propagate through the medium or channel then the third one is the physical medium transmission medium or communication channel through which your information will going to propagate then a receiver whose responsibility is to remodify our signal or just invert the operation of the transmitter then finally the destination where the information signal has to be destined or delivered so we'll discuss all those five elements one by one so we'll first start up with information source so what is information source information source is any device or it could be even a person that can generate the meaningful data is considered as information source there are mainly two types of information sources number one is your analog information and second one is your digital information sources so all those types of voice signals that we are generated it is actually analog so the example of analog information sources are human voice as well as audio signals then mainly the digital information sources could be considered as the signal generated by your various computers alphanumeric codes or mobile phones all those are the example of your digital information sources so this particular figure shows analog information source i mean human voice the signal generated by vocal cord is analog in nature and this is the type of this composite analog information signal then the source of digital information source could be considered as your desktop computer laptop computer mobile phones etc or various other digital devices which could actually generating the information in digital form so these are various types of information sources so generally the following types of information signal can be generated by various sort of sources i mean these types of signals could be your audio text images or videos these are basically various variants of information in which your signal could get generated so next is your transmitter so what is transmitter transmitter is basically a collection of one or more electronic devices or circuits that can convert the original source information to a form in which it is more suitable for the transmission over a particular transmission medium so i mean point is it 
could be the combination of multiple electronic devices and circuits which can actually modify the information generated by our source such that it could easily get transported through the transmission medium. So it generally includes the modulation, multiplexing and encoding process. Modulation means we are not at all actually transmitting our signal directly but with the help of carrier signal and we actually trying to change any of the characteristics or my carrier waveform as per the amplitude variation in my message signal. Then multiplexing is nothing but uh, applying many of the signal on a common channel. Then encoding is a specific type of coding in our information signal. So what are they we will discuss in greater details in our upcoming lectures. As of now th this could be the possible part of your transmitter. So a typical transmitter contains a transducer, modulator, multiplexer, encoder etc. So transducer is basically a device which is used to convert non-electrical quantity to a electrical quantity. So typically in this complete subject we will mainly discuss with the electronic communication system. Then next element is your transmission medium or channel. So transmission medium or communication channel is the physical medium link or path that is capable enough to transmit or transfer the electronic signal from the transmitter to the receiver. It is basically the direct link between your transmitter and the receiver. So some of the examples of your transmission medium or channel are your twisted pair cables, coaxial cables, fiber optic cables, waveguides, micro strip lines, free space, microwave links etc. This particular figure shows about your twisted pair cables and this is also a group of twisted pair cables these are basically known as your STPs shielded twisted pair cables which is generally being used in ethernet cables so basically five pairs of twisted pair cables which is covered by a plastic cover plastic cover is mainly responsible for providing safety to our STPs the name twisted pair cables is being given to them is just because of this twisted twisting structure in the center there is mainly a conductor which is being covered by various sort of plastic jackets and this particular figure typically shows the structure of fiber optic cable in the center point we'll be having a core which is made up of silica through which your light signal will going to take place with the help of total internal reflection then from construction point of view to cover that core we'll be having cladding whose refractive index is generally lesser than the refractive index of core then there is a plastic coating which is used to provide safety to our fiber optic cable then this particular figure shows the physical structure of a coaxial cable in which at the center we'll be having a copper or silver coated cable pure conductor which is known as your inner conductor then there is a outer conductor or shield which is basically a jacket of metal there is a plastic cover to provide safety to, to that particular coaxial cable to provide separation between inner conductor and outer conductor will be having insulator coaxial cable is mainly used for cable tv transmission systems then this is another type of physical medium microstrip microstrip is a type of electrical transmission line which can be fabricated through PCB board or PCB technology that is your printed circuit board technology which is used to convey the microwave frequency signal. This metallic strip and metallic ground plane is being separated by our substrate material. Then next example of your physical link is microwave links. So this particular figure shows various sort of microwave links. Different types of mobile towers that we are seeing nowadays these are the same microwave links which basically operational on line of sight communication and they actually transmitting highly energetic concentrated beam in microwave frequencies. So microwave link is a communication system that uses a beam of radio waves in the microwave frequency range to transmit information between two fixed location on the earth. Then next example of your channel or physical media is your waveguide. 
so this particular figure shows the structure of waveguide so a waveguide is is a structure that guides waves such as electromagnetic waves or sound waves what it actually do is they enable the signal to propagate with minimal loss of energy by restricting the expansion to one dimension or two so suppose if we consider that this is the inlet and whatever the source will going to generate the signal that will get passed through this constrained inlet only and what it it will going to do is it will going to restrict the expansion of that particular signal so that it could pass through the medium with less scattering or in the form of pointed beam then the next element of communication system is your receiver so what is receiver actually the main responsibility of receiver is to remodify the signal modified by our transmitter such that it could be understood by our destined user so receiver is nothing but a collection of one or more electronic devices or circuits that accepts the transmitted signal from the transmission medium and then convert back to the original information form so it generally includes the demodulation demultiplexing and decoding process as we had already mentioned earlier that its job is to remodify the signal that has been modified by the transmitter so in transmitter if we perform modulation operation then at receiver we must have to perform demodulation operation if at the transmitter side we are providing multiplexing to our signal then at receiving side we must have to perform demultiplexing and similarly as we providing encoding at our transmitting end then we have to perform decoding operation at the receiving end so a typical receiver contains a demodulator demultiplexer transducer obviously inverse transducer suppose if we consider about voice communication system and we are using microphone to convert our voice signal to the electrical one then at the receiver side we will be requiring a device which can convert our electronic signal into again analog mechanical vibrational waves so that we could understand it so if at the transmitting side we'll be having a microphone then at the receiver side we'll be having a speaker as a transducer so i mean these are various sort of devices such as your demultiplexer transducer decoder photo detector etc this actually a typical receiver contains then at last destination so anything that receives the transmitted information and is capable enough to store them suppose if we are considering about there is one to one or man to man communication going to take place then at destination point the destination is the other person to whom one person want to transmit its information again it must contain some sort of capabilities such as to understand the information as well as store them so some of the examples of your destination is or and devices are people computer handphones electronic devices etc then system noise noise is nothing but it is any unwanted type of signal which is undesirable for our communication system so noise is any unwanted electrical signal that can interfere with the information signal and alter them so it generally adds the information signal when it propagates through the channel so they mainly interfere with our information signal and they make them distorted through interference as we already know that if in a common medium two or more signals possessing same frequency components are passing then at some places their amplitude get added up and at some places their amplitude get subtracted so the place where their amplitude get added up this type of interference is known as your constructive interference and where will be getting lesser amplitude then that type of interference is known as destructive interference so this basically distorts our information signal so due to this additive nature of noise it is also called awgn that is additive white gaussian noise so some of the examples are atmospheric noise thermal noise man made noise cosmic noise internal noise etc there are other types of noise but we'll study in upcoming lectures in about classification of various sort of noises and these are the examples of communication system so we are considering two types of communication systems 
first one is your data communication system and second one is your telephony system so if we consider our data communication system then we'll be having a workstation or desktop or laptop which will going to generate your information then it has been connected through the modem and modem is being connected with PSTN network or public telephone network then on the other side suppose it wants to transmit its information to the server which is responsible for storing the information of the workstation that server is also being connected with the medium or channel through modem so basically this workstation is responsible for generating the information and that modem is responsible to prepare this information such that it could pass through your PSTN network then again this modem its responsibility is to reconvert the message signal such that it could be understood by the destined user or destined point so this particular workstation could be considered as your information source then that modem will be considered as your transmitter and physical media is nothing but your PSTN network your public telephone network then that second uh, modem at the receiving side the responsibility is to reconvert our information being considered as your receiver then server being worked as your destination or where information has to be delivered then again if we consider this telephony system then we could consider that there is a person who wants to communicate with this person so obviously this is the information source which through this particular telephony system will going to transmit its information through that common medium and it has been received by this destined user with the help of this receiver so these are some of the common examples of your communication system so these are the various differences thank you very much for your patient hearing